was black. Yo, this here is the latest upgrade in the office, the brand new Space Black M3 Pro MacBook. Not gonna lie, I was not expecting to be upgrading from my M1 Pro 16 inch so soon. That laptop has served me exceptionally well the past two years, but traveling with such a large profile has become a huge pain, and I really wanted to give you guys a look at what Apple's been cooking up. This is not a full review, just my thoughts after the initial 48 hours of setting this laptop up and switching over to it as my daily machine. What this means is that there will be a ton of photo and video editing done on here, as well as programming for work. I also plan to take some time to play around with iOS development so that I can get a better understanding of how this laptop laptop really performs for power users. I picked up the base model 14 inch, which retails for $19.99. What kind of sucks about this spec is that you're only getting a 512 gigabyte SSD, which in 2023 is pretty limited. I'm coming down from one terabyte, so we'll see how much I end up regretting this decision. In the past, these smaller capacity SSDs did also suffer from slower read and write speeds, and it seems that it's no different here. I don't have another M3 Mac to test, but comparing the 512 gigabyte SSD, SSD to the one terabyte one from my M1 Pro Mac, it's about 20% slower with both reading and writing. What this will translate to in real life use, I don't know yet, but so far, this Mac has still felt really snappy. Every app I've installed loads up super fast and Touch ID feels a lot quicker. The only use case where I think this slower SSD will become a problem is if you're working with 8K footage or just any heavy data. This base model also saw a small bump in RAM from 16 to 18 gigabytes. One of the issues I ran into with my M1 Pro was I constantly was pushing that 16 gigabytes to its max, which slowed down the machine when I was deep into work. Whether I'm programming or editing, I do tend to have quite a few Chrome tabs, which tends to be the main culprit. I don't expect to see a huge improvement here, but the increased memory is appreciated nonetheless. It's hard to say too much right now about this M3 Pro chip in comparison to the M1 Pro, but in terms of raw specs, this Mac has a 11 core CPU and 14 core GPU. Five of those CPU cores are performance cores and six are efficiency cores. While overall there's an extra CPU core from the M2 Pro, Apple decided to lower the number of performance cores from six on this base model. There's also two less GPU cores than the previous base M2 Pro, but with the hardware accelerated ray tracing, real world results may still be a little better, We'll have to wait and see. To get a better idea about the laptop's theoretical performance, I ran a speed test within Geekbench. For the single core performance, the M3 Pro saw a 17 increase from the M2 Pro, or a 20% increase from the M1 Pro. For multi-core performance, it was slightly worse, with only a 14% increase from the M2 Pro, or a 30% increase from the M1 Pro. I wanted to see how much of an effect reducing the GPU cores had, and in an OpenCL test, the results showed that the raw performance is actually 3% lower compared to the M2 Pro. For my full review, I'm going to perform real-world GPU tests, so that will hopefully shed a better light on this, so stay tuned. Geekbench scores can obviously only tell you so much, but from them, it's clear that the M3 Pro is a very small upgrade from the M2 Pro. I would say that if you bought the M2 Pro this year, you can probably skip this Mac entirely, as in day-to-day -day work, I don't think you'll see a significant difference. The internals are essentially the only area in which there's going to be any real upgrades. On the exterior, Interior of the laptop, it's identical to the previous two models. The chassis is the same aluminum material with the thick rounded edges. This is not a bad thing at all, I don't think there's really any reason to change it but this new space black finish will be the single differentiator. I was worried I wouldn't like it all that much as I've never been a fan of these space gray MacBooks, but this color is fucking gorgeous. Depending on the lighting, it will have a more silvery gray look to it, so on camera, it's hard to capture the color perfectly, but trust me, it looks so good. Fingerprints are going to be a lot of people's number one concern, and even with Apple's anodization seal, I still find that it picks up quite a lot of them. It's going to be the worst in a cold room where anytime you touch it, it'll leave a streak. I'm interested to see how it holds up a month from now, but really, as of right now, it's not so bad that it takes away from the design. 100% I can recommend Space Black. What I was most excited about with this laptop though, was the 14 inch display. It has the same liquid retina XDR screen we've seen with the M1 Pro, but a small difference is that the 
SDR brightness got a small bump from 500 to 600 nits. Day to day, this won't be very noticeable, but putting it side to side, you can tell that the new screen is slightly brighter. As for XDR brightness, you're going to get the same 1000 nits sustained and 1600 nits of peak brightness with HDR content. You of course still have ProMotion, which makes everything you do on the laptop feel much smoother, but what's significant is that the entire M3 lineup now has it, so if you do go with the 8GB M3 chip, you'll be able to take advantage of that. Coming from the 16 inch, I'm excited to be daily driving this smaller screen, as lugging around such a big laptop was obnoxious and just makes working with it in the lap less than ideal. I will miss the screen real estate, but I think that after a month I'll get used to it and find that trade off worth it. I typically work with the MacBook in clamshell mode anytime I'm at my desk, but to get the full experience of 14 inch, I do plan to primarily work directly off this display. I'm only going to be using my external ultrawides as secondary monitors. The M3 Pro chip can still only handle up to two displays. When over Thunderbolt, it can support up to two 6K 60Hz monitors. Alternatively, you can have one 6K 60Hz display over Thunderbolt, and then a second 4K 144Hz one over HDMI. At the top of this MacBook, you'll see that we still have the notch as before. It's the exact same and does not have Face ID, which I honestly expected we would have seen. The 1080p webcam and studio microphone within it is unchanged. The rest of this laptop physically is going to be the same. The smaller trackpad coming from the 16 inch is something I'll need to get used to. I find that I'm reaching the edge of it whenever I scroll. What does help is enabling three finger dragging. This way you don't need to click in order to grab onto a window. Interestingly, this 14 inch M3 Pro is just barely heavier than the M2 Pro, literally by 0.1 kilograms. I'm not sure what that's from, but of course it's meaningless. At just three and a half pounds, it's very easy to carry around. The M3 Pro's battery is slightly larger with a 72.4 watt hour capacity compared to to 70 watt hours from the M2 Pro. With the base model, only a 70 watt power adapter is included. It's a $20 upgrade for 96 watts. Even with the capacity upgrades, Apple still rated the battery life exactly the same, which I imagine probably has to do with the power draw of the new chip. I haven't had much time to test out the battery, but on its first charge, starting at around 80%, it dropped to 13% with roughly 8 hours of screen on time. I haven't really done any heavy work yet. This was mostly just setting up the Mac, downloading apps, so we'll see over the next month how much this changes. So what's the deal with the M3 Pro? Was it worth $2,000? I can't say for certain yet, but my initial impressions are that this is a very capable and powerful laptop that should be more than enough to handle all of my work. My main purpose buying this laptop was to have a machine that was a portable daily driver. As a tech reviewer, I really just want to get my hands on as much of the latest tech as possible, but to be honest with you guys, if I didn't make these videos, I probably wouldn't have upgraded. While it does feel snappier, the M3 Pro is still a marginal upgrade from both the M2 and M1 Pro in terms of raw performance. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the full review next month, where ultimately I'll be going over from real world use, not benchmarks, whether the M3 Pro is actually enough of an upgrade. That said though, I appreciate you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.